Hi, Pat.
Mic check. Can you hear me? Or is it, is it recording? Is it recording, Phoebe? Um, I'm checking. No sound, yes. No sound or yes sound? Yes. Okay, excellent. Can you hear me now? Excellent. Hello everyone, my name is Pat Padla and I work for BL Companies and I have the pleasure of working on Route 229 corridor study. Um, just um, some clear definitions of how to use Ring Central. Uh, um, please note this is the link to the, um, if you're on it, you already have the link to it, but on the bottom, please note, uh, there's two icons for your join audio and show your video. Uh, participation. However, that's only for panelists. So you yours is automatically turned off. But in order to communicate with us, please note that there's a chat button on the very bottom. So in order to facilitate communication with you, uh, with those of you who are online, um, please provide us with your questions or comments. And if we don't get to it right away, uh, provide us with means of contacting me, contacting you either your name or phone number or email. Um, so that said, I would like to introduce the Route 229 corridor study, uh, which is being sp sponsored by NVCOG, or worked in cooperation with NVCOG, Connecticut Department of Transportation, Prague, Town of Suddington, and City of Bristol. The purpose of the study is to evaluate um, safety along its corridor, congestion, and multimodality, uh, providing uh, facilities for transit, bike, and pads. Also, um, our goal is to look at the travel demand growth for the future and its land uses and vision and provide improvements along, um, along its length. So uh, for those of you who are here with us in, in, in the room, uh, there are several boards and you can notice there's a theme to it where we have divided the corridor into three segments. So in the south, we have the southern segment, also known as West Street where it starts with I-84 ramps. It travels all the way to ESPN uh, Drive, at which point it turns into a middle street and also our central segment. It continues all the way to Broad Street, at which point it turns into a northern segment and also it's named King Street. And again, this segment starts from Broad all the way to US 6, also known as Farmington Avenue. So all the boards and all the presentation will be referencing those three segments um, separately. So we are in the um, planning process uh, of the study and we have worked through several um, phases already. We have done the project initiation. We have met with the town re representatives. We have collected information and assessed the existing condition. And we started looking at the future conditions what it mean to what it would mean if we were to build out the corridor and what kind of alternatives or improvements we could start looking at. Our next phase is to solicit your input, the publics, to look at transportation and development improvements and management plan in the corridor. So for data collection efforts, we have looked at traffic, that means uh, 24 hour counts, historical counts, turning counts speed information, how fast the vehicles are traveling, crash data, last three years, as well as five years for fatal crashes and pedestrian crashes, transit information along the corridor or near the study area, pedestrian and bicycle facilities, that means sidewalks, ramps, um, shoulders, and so forth, uh, land use and zoning for future developments and what it's planned and zoned out currently, Access management, that means any curb cuts. And last, cultural and historically significant landmarks and buildings along the corridor. So for traffic data, we have looked at the historical counts from Connecticut DOT. The data provided to us was from 2006 all the way to 2020. Uh, 2020. Please note that 2020 
is the year where COVID has started. That's the traffic counts during that year or during that collection period are much lower than any other time. Overall, the corridor grows throughout the years. Using the same set of data, we have also looked at the peaking patterns. So during AM peak, the corridor peaks at 7 AM. During PM, it peaks at 4 PM. And midday, it's precisely at noon. Um, in addition to looking into traffic counts, we have looked at posted speed limits versus the speed at which vehicles tra are traveling at. We looked at the 85 percentile, meaning 85 percent of vehicles are traveling in that speed. So looking at the map, which I'm going to move our faces over, um, there are three prevailing posted, posted speed limits along the corridor. So in the southern segment, West Street, the posted speed limit is 40 miles per hour. A majority of vehicles are traveling at 45 miles per hour, 45 miles per hour, so about five miles above posted speed limit. In the central segment, the posted speed limit is 30 miles per hour. However, majority of vehicles are traveling anywhere between 45 to 50 miles per hour. And last, in the northern segment, King Street, and uh, from Broad Street all the way to Farmington Avenue, uh, posted speed limit is 35 miles per hour, and majority of vehicles are traveling at 45 uh, miles per hour. So this is going to be significant in later slides. So it, aside from looking at um, posted speed limit and travel speeds, uh, we looked at hotspots, uh, locations of crash information. So we looked at three years from 2017 uh, to 2019. And what I'm trying to get you to see in this particular slide is just look at the map and um, the locations where there's more frequent car crashes. Um, anywhere where you see a red dot or a red color, it signifies higher car, uh, car crashes. So these locations include in the southern segment, Curtis Street, Spring Street, and West Queen Street. In the central segment, you have a little bit of red around Cross Street and Redstone Hill Road. But you see a significant red color around the Trident area of Riverside Avenue, Mountain Road, Pine Road, and the Route 72 extension, so that little Trident area. In the northern segment, you'll see a little bit of crash or heavy crashes around intersections of um, Bristol Eastern High School, Moody Street, or Louisiana Ave, and then, of course, uh, by US Route 6. So um, now we've talked about some of the crash information along the corridor itself, but we wanted to take particular attention or pay particular attention at fatal crashes, pedestrian crash, crashes, and uh, bicycle uh, crashes. So the red stars signify pedestrian or bicycle crashes along the corridor. Majority of them or have had happened in the northern and central segment. However, when we overlay it with fatal crashes, fatal crash does not necessarily mean pedestrian crash. It could also mean car crash. Um, there's more significant locations. So overall from crashes, what we can learn is the fact that over the last three years, and again, we looked only at 2017 to 2019, we admitted the year 2020 because of COVID. Um, overall, there were, in the last three years, there were seven fatal crashes, but in the five-year period, there were there, um, there were seven fatal crashes. In the three-year period, there were only fa four fatal crashes. Majority of crashes resulted in no apparent injury. Only 26% of them did result in some injury or suspected minor injury. Um, from the crash tide perspective, most of the crashes uh, were front to rear or front to front, as well as side swipes. And last and not least, um, something that we, I wanted to highlight with this graphic in particular is the speed at which a crash occurs. So when a vehicle, um, a, an average risk of a death for a pedestrian happens uh, rises as the speed increases. So with 25 mile per hour speed uh, um, crash, 
only 10% of those crashes result in fatality. However, with a full 40 mile per hour speed, 50% of those crashes will result in the pedestrian death. At 50 miles per hour, 90% of those crashes will result in fatality. So knowing that in the quarter, that majority of vehicles are traveling at between 35 to 45 miles per hour, um, any crash with a pedestrian, there's a higher frequency or um, possibility of uh, a crash resulting in a fatality. So next, I would like to bring some uh, attention to multimodal accommodations. Um, let's start with transit. There are several bus routes near the corridor. In the corridor itself, there are no bus routes. However, on Route 72, there are two. CT Fast Track Route 101, uh, 102, that travels from Bristol to Hartford. There's about 1,300 boardings and alightings uh, every day on that bus route, and three of them actually um, get on the bus or get off the bus uh, uh, within the half a mile of the corridor. Similarly, Express Bus Route 502, it follows similar path to Route 102, uh, with the exception of the fact that it has less number of stops and only serves during peak time. Uh, there's about 200 boardings and alightings, and 3% of those do happen near our corridor. Last but not least, the bus route that is being serviced uh, near our corridor is a local bus route, 541, that travels along Farmington Avenue. And the daily light ridership is about 270 um, individuals, and 20% of them get on or off uh, around our corridor area. Please note, right north of, of our corridor on Farmington Avenue, that's the location where there's a lot of uh, commercial development, and we could see individuals utilizing the bus services for that. So in addition to looking into a bus route, another data point or reference that Connecticut DOT provides is Transit Need Index. And what it means is it looks at the social demographic information, such as population, employment, income, as well as the existing bus routes and their ridership and it grades the services or need for additional services. So green means low need, red means high need. The redder the color, the more need for bus transit there is. So as you can see, the town of the city of Bristol, uh, and especially around our corridor, there's a lot of um, dark orange and, and red color. Please note through this central uh, segment and southern segment, there is no transit services, therefore there is no data that Connecticut DOT could utilize to make the assessment. Next, um, again, thinking in the theme of multimodality, uh, we looked at the shoulder widths. So we're trying to follow an easy color scheme where light color means narrow shoulders, dark color means wide shoulders. So in the southern segment, you will see continuous narrow shoulders on either side. In the central segment, for the most part, also somewhat narrow shoulders. And in the northern segment, that width varies. Please note along intersections or nearby intersections, the width of the shoulder is compromised or, or given in lieu of uh, turn lanes. So knowing that we covered speed, we covered shoulder presence, and we know that the terrain is hilly or there's rolling terrain throughout the corridor. Those three factors are being used to assess the suitability of the corridor for bike features or bike path. Uh, again, this is a feature or, or, or a data point that Connecticut DOT provided to us and uh, they graded it in a similar fashion where they have green color for suitable, uh, red color for least suitable. Um, for cyclists to use. So knowing that the vehicles are traveling at a high speeds, uh, shoulder presence is, um, is there, but it's narrow. Uh, for the most part, a lot of the pieces of the corridor are designated as least suitable. However, there are some green, green bands with bandwidths as well. The dash line along the corridor signifies potential bike paths or bike trails that Connecticut DOT is looking at. However, there are no funds associated with 
uh, that data. And last, we looked at the pedestrian facilities. So that means your sidewalks, their condition, uh, how wide they are, or, or sidewalks presence in general, what surface type they're using. Is, is it built out of concrete or pavement? Does it have a snow shelf presence or a curb? Uh, are there ramps, handicap, uh, uh, ADA compliant? Do they have flares, detectable warnings, or, or um, are there any obstructions up, um, along the corridor or along the sidewalks? Also, along, along with the sidewalks, we looked at the placement of pedestrian push buttons, as well as slopes of the sidewalks. So all that information was coded into GIS, uh, and we tried to simplify all the information behind it. Uh, in addition to looking at the pedestrian push button location, as it's signified with an orange dot, we also have plethora of information. Is the pedestrian push button easily accessible? Does it block the sidewalk or not? So there's more information behind it. Same with sidewalks. Uh, one thing that I wanna bring everyone's attention to is uh, in the Northern segment, the sidewalk is uh, almost continuous throughout. In the central segment, uh, it's present for the most part on the east side. In the south segment, the sidewalk is present only at uh, newly developed areas. Please note in the southern segment or in the town of Suddington, uh, a, lot of the develop, uh, a lot of the land is not developed yet. Therefore, there is no need, um, there, there is no sidewalks provided. Uh, another point of reference in collecting was data uh, access management. So by access management, as I mentioned before, it's looking at curb cuts, meaning um, either intersections, signalized or unsignalized, or access points via driveway, either commercial or residential. So in um, Northern segment, you will see a lot of dots because it's heavily residential. Um, so you will see a lot of green and blue dots signifying uh, driveway access points, few dots for uh, intersections compared to the other two segments. So now since we've gathered all of that, all of that information, we have looked at the operational um, component of the corridor. Again, we broke the information into the three segments. And we also try to utilize colors to signify um, operational quality. So level of service A and B signifies that vehicles are traveling at um, free flow and they experience hardly any delay with up to 20 second delay. Level of service C and D means vehicles may experience some delay anywhere between 20 seconds up to a minute a level of service EMF means that vehicles may, re, uh, may experience more than a minute of delay. So as you can see in the northern segment, we have looked at the peak time of AM, 7 AM. For PM, we looked at uh, 6 PM. Um, and for midday, we looked at uh, noon on Saturday and, and its performance. So in the northern segment, majority of vehicles or intersections perform at acceptable level or, or great level with hardly any delay. There's few exceptions, uh, Farmington in the PM and West Washington Street AM and PM experience some delay. In the central segment, again, most of the intersections perform at a really good level. Green means good, red means congested. So we'll see only some congestion at Mountain Road, Pine Street, and Riverside Avenue. Those are the intersections of that trident where we talked about have high crash rates as well as heavy uh, or, or um, a large number of vehicles and thus you may experience some delay. And then the Southern segment, Majority of intersections also perform with the level of service A and B, meaning highly any, hardly any delay. However, there are a few locations with, whoo, sorry, few locations with um, delay. Welch Street in PM, as well as Curtis Street in PM with a little bit of delay. And West Queen, West Queen Street throughout the day, uh, there's always a little bit of delay. 
So what are our next steps? Our goal is to uh, reach out to you and ask you to participate in our survey, as well as answer some of our questions via online or in person um, to provide us with some of your answers to what works well in the corridor. What are the challenges? What are the opportunities? How can we make the corridor more safe, more safety and more accessible? How can we make the pedestrian and bicycle accommodations better? So um, for those of you that are online, I will encourage you to uh, provide your comments via chat box or also please visit our project website and provide us your comments via that. Also on our project website, we have uh, included um, a link to the survey. Um, in the meantime, I'll present to you some of the possible improvements that our study team came up with. So um, right away, we found of the high crash rates and fatal fatality locations um, as a point of reference or a point of interest where we would like to look for some improvements or any, or any type of improvements that we could make. In the northern segment, we look to add providing exclusive left turn lanes at selected intersections. Also, we looked at providing a continuous or improved pedestrian facilities. In the central segment, we looked at, uh, or we're looking at providing bike lanes from Riverside Avenue all the way to Lake Avenue. Um, looking at providing additional signals at selected field locations. And for continu continuity in the southern segment, looking at second southbound through lane. So here are some renderings of the proposed uh, improvements that we have developed. One of them is right across from uh, Wilson Playground. A uh, few things that we're proposing with this rendering is providing a multi-use path on one side and a sidewalk on the other. So we're basically providing pedestrian bike facilities on either side of the roadway. We also are providing or asking for uh, additional crossings or raised crossings to, to make it more visible to the vehicles. Um, and of course, street lightings and improved handicap ramps. Another rendering or um, improvement that we're suggesting or we've looked at is providing a bus turnout with decorative concrete, uh, decorative stamps concrete. We also looked at providing uh, additional lighting, as well as bus shelter uh, for the intersection that already exists. Um, we propose some minor improvements. Again, sidewalk, handicap ramps, as well as potential stamped concrete um, crosswalks and uh, intersection itself. We also looked at not only from rendering perspective, but actually from analytical perspective, we looked at um, extending the southbound through lane all the way to I-84. So with that, we uh, looked at the operational as aspect of it. If we were to extend that southbound through movement, for example, uh, with the existing conditions, you could see some improvement along the corridor. So from level of service D in, at Welch Road, it improves level of service A, meaning hardly any delay. Similarly, uh, from level of service D on West Queen Street, let's say in PM, it improves the level of service C. And another one, uh, level of service E, at Curtis Street, it improves the level of service C. So with that said, we also looked at uh, potential signal, additional signal locations. Um, there were three locations identified uh, by the town, uh, by the respective town representatives uh, and stakeholders. These locations were Vincent P. Kelly Road, West Pine Drive, and Churchill Street. Those locations went through um, MUTCD standard nine warrants. So the nine warrants basically represent um, two categories for safe, safety reasons or special cases. In the safety reasons, there's uh, various warrants to look at from a traffic volume perspective, perspective 
pedestrian volume perspective, school crossing, high crash rate experience or rail crossing. In the special cases, it could be volumes again or hourly volumes, coordinated signal timing warrants and roadway network uh, warrant. So we looked at it from the volume perspective and all three signals um, meet condition 1B, meaning there's high enough site road volumes to warrant a signal. So again, our next step is to identify potential locations for improvements and uh, locations that we could analyze with your input. We want to uh, we want, to, we want you to tell us what you think about the corridor. So again, it's the same uh, message, same questions. Uh, please tell us what you think. Katie, do we have any comments? We can finish comments, yeah. We have five people joining via the webinar. All right, so I just got a relay <laughs> that we have no comments yet. But we have several participants um, via web. So I wanna thank you for, for your time. And if you do have any comments, please ask us and we'll be happy to answer them. For those of you that are in with us here, uh, please approach us and, and we'll be happy to share with you any knowledge that we have about the corridor. Thank you. Any comments? No. Okay. Should I stop the presentation so you could see participants or do switch the other presentation? Which table? Got it. Thank you. So Katie posted also the survey and um, the project website in the chat box. So for those of you who are participating online, please feel free to browse through both and participate in both. Right. Would you like to say a few words while we're while we're online? <laughs> so our project manager will speak. Uh, will give us a few words um, um, as well about the project and and anything else he deems worthy. Uh, yes, thank you, Pat. Uh, my name is Rich Donovan. I'm a transportation planner with the Naugatuck Valley Council of Governments and uh, and the project manager on our on our team for this project. Um, again, we just want to say thank you for uh, for attending this evening, and and we really look forward to your thoughts on this project uh, and some of the alternatives proposed. Um, there is still uh, still plenty of time between now and the final version of this, and so. Uh, please visit our website nvcogct.gov and take a look at this project um, and share share your feedback. Thank you again. Uh, thank you, uh, Katie. Are there any more comments? Okay. Well, at this time, I'm going to turn off the presentation. And excellent. Can you read it? Were roundabouts considered for the project? We have not, not any specific locations. Um, is there any specific intersection that this person has in mind? We can definitely take a look at that. Where is a large piece of stamped concrete? <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> that would be in reference to Sorry. Oh, 
immersive. I assume this is the reference point, which would be at Lake Avenue and uh, driveway to the Terry Commons. Excellent. Will do. <laughs> Uh, so we have another six months of this study. Uh, we have um, essentially completed the existing conditions or looking at the existing conditions of the corridor itself. Now we're looking at the potential uh, improvements in the corridor itself. So we're looking for your input, what locations you would like us to study um, to improve and to provide you with um, rendering so you can have a visualization of what it would mean um, to make changes in the corridor. Uh, Please do add. <laughs> yes, just as a, uh, a quick add on to that, there is a detailed schedule on our project website. Um, so please feel free to take a look and, uh, um, yes. you know, any questions about specific uh, pieces of that, please let us know. That's fine. Any other questions and comments? All right, well, thank you everyone. Uh, we have a few more minutes. We'll stick around. However, uh, we'll, we'll close out the internet connection uh, just so we could um, participate more uh, with the individuals present uh, at, with us at the library. Thank you.